I think something that's so important is like you can hold both. Yeah. Because I can feel even still frustrated and and ask God, like, where, what are you doing? I don't get it. But I feel your peace like I never have in my whole life. Mm. And I see you carrying this entire family right now in a way that I can't understand. Yeah. So I, I can go with him with my question and my trust. Well, Merry Christmas, everyone. Come on in. It is time for Talk It Out, where you and your friends talk about everything that has to do with life and God's Word. And today, we're going to share our Christmas confession. So Aaron and I... No. Aaron, Aaron, this is going to be... <laughs> I don't even know Aaron, what's going to happen. Aaron, Aaron. Aaron, Aaron. Um, yeah. But let me, let me say, yes. this shirt that you're wearing today... Yes, thank you for noticing. Yes, the InSync <sighs> Christmas shirt. Thank you. Home InSync. I'll, I'll tell you, it, it's almost like a Pavlov's dog reaction that I have to <laughs> it because it makes me want to go Christmas shopping with you. Yes, we've done... I have worn a shirt for many years since I've known you. So we have gone on trips together with this shirt. Mm -hmm. It has gone with us to shopping in Chicago, to all sorts of places. Many, so it really many is a, Christmas trips. And they bring people together with love. Yeah, mm -hmm. and... and we we sing the songs and it's really beautiful. Maybe we'll end the show that way today. <laughs> Wait and stay <laughs> and see if we do. Chances are that's a no. Something to look forward to. But what sure. we're what we are going to do today is we are going to talk about our Christmas confessions. And it's really looking back at a year, mm -hmm. some things that have been good and some things that have been really hard. Yeah. And just being really honest mm -hmm. with ourselves and with God and how we deal with some of the hard questions and hard things in life. Yeah. This is not a fluffy confession show. This is not mm -mm. like, you know, when you go to a, a job interview and they say, what's your greatest weakness? And you say, oh, I just work too hard. <laughs> That's you know? the you just know. <laughs> I'm a really hard worker. Yeah, I just love yeah. people too much. Mm -hmm. It's not that kind of confession. Mm -mm. This This is... The real stuff. I'm excited to do this with you too because you know me so well and I know you so well. So to be able to, one, it'll be fun to see if we know each other's confessions, but then also just to do it with someone that you trust. And then like our That's talk it huge. out friends, we're, we're a community here together. Yeah. So to get to be honest about things that we're probably all struggling with is so, so important. That's why I think this is really key to, to be honest mm -hmm. with the hard stuff in our life and to bring it to God yeah, absolutely. is a gift. It is. And Sometimes we want to hide those things like we don't want God to know. Oh, yeah. And He knows. Yes. He wants to help us with mm -hmm. it, but we hold back. Mm -hmm. One time, not to get too serious too fast, but a couple years ago, so, you know, I've shared what Mike and I have gone through. So mm -hmm. this is like the crux of when things were really bad. And I was struggling with, I don't even think I like this person. And just having all these thoughts, and I thought, maybe this means that, like, this sh we shouldn't be married anymore. But I didn't tell anybody that, because who's going to say that out loud? But I remember walking by your office one day, and it, it must have been the Holy Spirit, and I confessed to you, I'm having these thoughts, and is like, is there something wrong with me? And you said, oh, I felt that way too when I went through this. And sometimes I still have those thoughts. And hearing yeah. you say to me, I relate to you, I understand you're not alone, made me think, oh, I can do this. Like, it's, it's yeah. okay. I can keep going. Like, I'm not the only one. Yes. I'm not a terrible person. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. It, it really is human nature. Yeah. It, it, it made such a difference to know that I'm not by myself and yeah. my feelings. Well, we're, we're going to get into some really serious things that I think a lot of our friends yeah. will connect to as well. Absolutely. But I thought it'd be fun to start with some of the more lighthearted confessions. Yes. Um, they're just true. Mm -hmm. um, and it's okay to say them out loud. Mm -hmm. We don't have to be proud of them. <laughs> So I'll tell you this that happened last night. It's so oh, it's fresh. A fresh confession. It's so fresh. I can be. I can be a real butt. Am I allowed to say that? I, I, didn't I can know be that a very. You. <laughs> I can be. I'm sure. So can I say that? So annoying. <laughs> <laughs> so last night, Tim Tim brought home flowers, and it was so kind and so Aww. sweet, and he's so thoughtful like that. Yeah. And I just didn't. React the way I should have. And no, I didn't say it out loud. He does not know this. and he, We shall not let him listen. Yes, he does not need to hear this. But I was just tired yeah. from, from a long day, got mm -hmm. home late and had a lot to do. It was a good day, but it was a long day. Mm -hmm. I was just tired and, and I still had more to do. And the first thought I had when he gave me these beautiful flowers were, 
oh, no, I'm going to have to put them in a vase <laughs> and cut off the ends and arrange them. And I just want to go lay down on the couch. Yeah. I mean, what what no, is I get it, selfish, though. terrible thing when mm-hmm. he's being so kind? So, I, you know, I had to force myself to yep. say, oh, that's so sweet. And and once you start saying it, you believe it. It's not fake because I really did appreciate yes. it. But I had to get over that first glitch of, you know. Absolutely. Being ridiculous. Yeah. Your go-to in that moment was not. Yeah. He's the best. That was nice, though. Why did he do that? He just does that. I mean, he's just thoughtful like that. and That's so sweet. It means a lot. Yeah. And he, he knows that I love to have fresh flowers mm-hmm. in the house. And they're like weedy, inexpensive grocery flowers, which are my very oh, favorite. Love I love wild-looking flowers. Yes. Yeah. So One time, confession, I, I wanted to find you flowers. And I, those weedy ones are hard to find. So I thought, <laughs> like, maybe I can grab those on the side of the road and just, like, wrap them in twine. And that she would probably would think the they're so great. <laughs> I could have broken a law for you that day. <laughs> Just don't get hit by a car or anything for me. No. Yeah. I will not do that. Any That's confession you want to share? Um, yeah, I thought of some, but they were kind of dumb. Like, I confess, I sleep in socks. People are really weirded out by that, that I wear socks I don't bed. know how you do it. See? I don't know how you do it. Like, how do you not sleep in socks? Because my toes need to be free and get get the wind of... <laughs> Is it breezy under there? No, I don't know why I said that. (laughs) But I don't know. Socks seem constraining and like they'll stick in the covers or something. Oh, no. My my feet get cold. Well, that's what covers are for. That's no. It's no, you're wrong. No, I get it. I'm the only one. It's okay. I get it. I also, um, I realized this one this morning. I'm a terrible parker. And I do not not like to admit that um, there are certain stereotypes of women that are, right. That are, I don't like that. That we're not good no. drivers. That is ludicrous. It is. However, You're a very good driver. I am a great driver, but, but I cannot park a car to save my life. <laughs> and so I have to back in to get the kids from school. And, and so I will go 30 minutes early just so nobody will have to watch me <laughs> back in five times. I can't parallel park, so I will drive around the block to find a spot to park my car so uh-huh. I don't have to parallel park. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry to hear that. Yes, yeah, just not good. But you can overcome it. I mean, maybe. You can. I've been driving a long time. <laughs> I am jealous of people like Erin, whose eyes are open when she smiles. Because <laughs> mine just disappear into little slits, and you have big, beautiful eyes. But between the two of us, we have the perfect forehead because oh, we do. my forehead is only about a half inch tall. I have none. And mine is a mile long. And you have more. And so more. between us, we have, we have a really good forehead. And good eyes. <laughs> but like a perfect person if you push us together. <laughs> well, on to why we're doing this. Yes. I mean, when it comes Christmas time, mm-hmm. it is a really difficult time for a lot of people. It it's a joyous time. We're so thankful for what God has done, and mm-hmm. hopefully we can all focus on those things. But when we've lost someone, when our situation is not the way we want yeah. it to be when we're alone, it's, it's really hard. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the things that... Um, your family went through yeah. this year, and yeah. it's very similar to what my family went through mm-hmm. in many ways um, just the year before. Mm-hmm. So you've had some hard times. Yeah, it's been an it's been a hard year, and we lost my father in law um, to a just a tragic motorcycle accident a couple months ago, and so he's the first person that's been really close to us that we've lost as a family, yeah. and for sure the first person my kids have ever lost. So. There's, there's so many layers to the loss and mm-hmm. the grief process. And interesting, it's interesting to me too, because I've no, I had known this man for 15 years. So he became like a second dad to me. But then I'm also watching my husband grieve in a different way because it's his dad. Mm-hmm. Um, it was his stepdad, but it was like his dad. Yeah. So having to, to have my own grief and then comfort my husband... And then try and tell my kids that sometimes this just things just happen. Yeah, bad things happen. Um, it's been it's been hard, and um, I have often wanted to ask, like, just to confess, questions of why why this this was totally unnecessary, mm-hmm. and this man was a was a good man, and he loved the Lord and. So things like that. And I'm not the only one who's lost someone. And you know, too. I mean, you went through it, like you said. But all those questions that I also think we're afraid to ask Mm -hmm. because we love Jesus. 
Right. And we we have faith, so we don't ask yeah. why. And we feel almost guilty, especially at the holidays. Oh, yeah. That we're still hurting mm-hmm. and that it's you want it to be a wonderful time for your kids. You do. You know, mm-hmm. all of the things that are happening around you and you still feel a hole or yeah. a void. Yeah, and you can take like some steps forward of, of progress, like you yeah. feel like you're healing and you're not over it, but, you know, moving forward. And then something will come up and it kind of puts you back. And so to have, even going into the holidays, how to have the joy of what we've been given through the birth of Jesus but also that sadness of someone is missing. Mm-hmm. And Mike was, right after it happened, he he starts crying. And I I said, what are, you, what are you thinking about? And he said, every Christmas, Mark is his name. Mark and I would go to the attic or wherever the toys were, mm-hmm. and we'd pull them down and we would put them together together that night. So that way the kids could have them in the morning. And he said, he said, I can do that by myself or I can help, but... That was so special for us to do together. Yeah. So to think of this Christmas, that Mike's not going to get to have that with his dad and little things like that. Yeah. Or just, it's it's hard. Yeah. The the loss that you went through too, you also had a time with your family in the hospital that was hard <sighs> while you were waiting yes. to see what God would do. Yeah. We had the same thing. Mm-hmm. Um, the loss we faced in our family was also named Mark. Yeah. And... Um, I find titles very mm-hmm. insignificant. Mm-hmm. You, you said stepdad, but it was really his dad. Yeah. This yeah. is my brother and all, but he was really my brother. Mm-hmm. You know, those things don't mean anything when you love someone. Yeah. Um, but going through that that time, like you did, we did as well while yeah. we were in the hospital with him, as he slowly slipped away yeah. and praying for a miracle, and that wasn't God's response. Mm-hmm. And so then you have those. You know, I'll I'll confess, I I had that real faith, that real trust for a long time. I yeah. really yeah. believed you did that this I was going you. to go so yes. differently. Yeah. And um, then when it when it happens the way that it does, mm-hmm. we we were really blessed that God gave a peace and some beautiful moments mm-hmm. with Him. That I reacted differently than I would have in the past. Mm-hmm. When mm-hmm. you know, I I would have had anger. I mm-hmm. would have had a lot more questions. So you know, I'm so glad that those things that I confessed in the past and yeah. dealt with, yeah. I'm even through the grief. Yeah. I'm seeing that God is helping me. He's growing me, and I'm learning through it. Yeah. And and it makes a huge difference. I'm so glad you said that. I think something that's so important is like you can hold both. Yeah, because I can feel even still frustrated and and ask God, like, where, what are you doing? I don't get it. Yeah. But I can also at the same time have a peace that passes understanding that I, I don't, I don't get it. And I will never understand it on this side of heaven. I will never understand your plan, but I feel your peace. Like I never have in my whole life. Mm. And I see you carrying this entire family right now in a way that I can't understand. Yeah. So I, I can go with him with my question and my trust. I think that has been such a big lesson. That is huge. Yeah. Well, Joyce has obviously learned this and a lot of hard mm-hmm. things that she went through yeah. in, in her own life. So right now we're going to listen to Joyce talking about the loss of her mother and what she experienced there. I lost my mother and it was it was interesting because one of the reasons I had the reaction that I had was because even though my dad had already passed and my only brother had already passed, Now my mother was gone and it was like there was a finality that I was never going to get from those family relationships what any normal person should have. And so there was a grieving that I experienced, but I have enough experience with God to know not to let a spirit of grief get on me or to get bitter about something that I missed in life because even though I missed something back there, And even though you may have missed a lot back there, somebody mistreated you, somebody hurt you, somebody didn't give you what you should have had, you worked hard at a job for a long time, you got passed over for for promotions time after time, then you got laid off and it's just not fair and part of you is screaming out, it's just not right. Well, it's natural to have an anger when you're mistreated, but you can't try to take it into your future. No matter what I lost back there, I can have a wonderful tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day, but it's up to me 
and it's up to you about what kind of attitude I'm going to have. Don't let the devil dictate your attitude to you. Amen? Don't let the enemy form your attitude. Learn how to form your attitude from God. The God of all comfort is here with us this weekend, and we're going to learn how to get divine transfusions of comfort. You know, if you were anemic, you could go to the hospital and get some kind of a transfusion. I like to watch these emergency room shows and, you know, boy, if somebody comes in and this is not right or that's not right, one of the first things they call for is blood and they get a transfusion. Well, you know what? We can get a transfusion from the blood of the cross this morning. We, can, we don't have to be anemic Christians. We don't have to be weak people who go around with all of our vital Christian signs off. We can check into the hospital of the Holy Ghost this morning and say, I need a divine transfusion of comfort. I need a divine transfusion of your presence. And all it takes is just a willingness to believe that God is here, that he's not only with you, but he's in you, and that he's there to help you, and that you don't have to live your life crippled and lame and just worn out and weary and bitter and resentful. You can't change things on your own, but you can go and get a divine transfusion in the presence of God, and he can make your future so bright that you would need sunglasses to even look at it. How encouraging is that? So good. You know, when, when we're confessing, those questions. And, mm -hmm. and it feels like as a Christian, mm -hmm. you're not supposed to have that kind of reaction. Mm -hmm. You're not supposed to be angry or question or have a lack of faith, heaven forbid. Mm -hmm. And for everything that Joyce went through and everything that so many people yeah. have gone through to say, God is the God of all comfort yep. and that we don't have to be stuck mm -hmm. in those things. And it's okay to share it with God and to talk about it. It is. And it, hearing her say that she even felt frustrated, yeah, I, that just was like a, like a revelation to me because do you take Joyce, for example, she is, she, I love talking to her because the Bible just pours out of her. She can't go more than a couple of sentences without Jesus just coming out in some way or another. And so to hear that, she has even felt that. Mm -hmm. then, like that's a normal feeling that we all go through and that yeah. God gave us feelings and emotions. Right. But but there's a, a way to handle it. So have you ever had those things when you've read the Bible? Like here here's here's a scripture example that that I've had some of these feelings before. If you have, then I have. So go ahead, <laughs> let's see. <laughs> Second Corinthians one, three and four. Okay. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. I love that. That's mm -hmm. wonderful. Mm -hmm. Then it goes on no, to don't say stop. Okay, that was <laughs> yeah, good. we should stop. <laughs> who comforts us in all our affliction so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction mm. with the comfort with which we ourselves were comforted by God. That's so good. So I love the idea of that, but I don't want to have to go through the thing. No. I want to comfort people without experiencing it myself. And it's like, yeah. God, why, why do we all have to suffer yeah. in order to feel your comfort and I'm so glad that we can and that then we can give it to others. Yep. But if it was up to me, I might do it a different way. <laughs> no, we can have another plan here. Right. You know what? Another confession along with that is it is hard for me when you hear, like to your point of that, that verse, it's all for God's glory. God is going to get glory out of this. Yeah. And so I have asked him, like, why do you need all this glory? Do, do <laughs> you need... I love you asked that. Yeah. Yeah. Because... Isn't that a little bit, I don't know, I just, I can't understand why he needs it because he he created everything. Right. He's the God of the universe and we, um, everything is formed in his image and he'll hold us in his hand and we know those things about him. So why does he need to do this as well to get more? Yeah. I love that you asked that question. Do you have the answer? <laughs> I really do. Well, only, only what I've learned mm -hmm. in asking those same questions because uh, I'll confess, I am such a questioner. Yeah. And in some ways it's healthy. Yeah. In some ways it's just how God made me. Mm -hmm. So he knows it. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it's part of that journalistic instinct mm -hmm. and and everything that he's put in me. Yeah. But when when I've questioned, I have come to a point where God has said, just like he did Job, you gotta stop this. Yeah. I am 
everything that you're not. Mm -hmm. I have created the earth. Mm -hmm. I have a good plan. I don't need your help. Mm -hmm. And your questions are so much smaller than my view of everything. But what what I have really learned in in even asking those questions, because God will do that, but He's also so loving and such a kind gentleman that, Mm -hmm. that He will say, but... This is because I love you. Yeah. And I know that inside of you mm-hmm. is a need to give me glory. Hmm. Inside of you is a need to worship me and to focus on something bigger than yourself. That's so good. And to be comforted and to give comfort to other people. Because that's how he built us. Exactly. To want to give him. Glory. So all those questions oh, I have, yep. like uh, let's be honest, it's like, why? Who do you who do you think you are? Why didn't you do this differently? Mm-hmm. It's like then I I feel terrible. Mm -hmm. But God's not saying you should feel terrible. Right. But He is saying, this is who I am. Mm -hmm. And there's a really good reason for every single thing that I do. That's true. And and in so many situations that I walk through, whether it's me or someone I've watched walk through something, Mm -hmm. and you, I I question God of what, like, what are you doing? But if you can zoom out and you can, like, you give it a couple years or however long it takes, you can always see how he worked it out. It's true. Hindsight is beautiful. It is. And so as I'm growing in my wisdom and age, um, I am almost 40. So, you know, I am very smart. (laughs) You are very wise. I actually know less now than I used to. (laughs) Thank you. You That's grow. my wisdom. As I grow, things are falling out, yeah. and I'm losing what I used to. I don't know, know anything actually, <laughs> but what I do know um, is, if I can give him time, I'm like go ahead and ask my questions. But if I can give him some time to like let him be God yeah. and finish what he's doing, then it. I know that I know that I know he will work it out for good. Mm-hmm. I truly believe that. Mm-hmm. But it's in the heat of the moment when it something is fresh that it's easy to just that throw perspective really out the window and. And stick in your pain. Yeah. Sometimes God just says, like, shh. Oh, you yeah, know, just does. be quiet. Mm-hmm. Just, I've heard you mm-hmm. and I'm working. Mm-hmm. So just be still. Mm-hmm. And that is the hardest thing for me to do. I am not really good at, um, okay, big weakness, big confession. And you don't know this about me, Aaron, but I'm not a real patient person. <laughs> wow. Guys, the shock on your face. Together. The shock on your face makes me feel so much better. Um, no, I, obviously patience is not one of one of my virtues, well, but I'm, either, I'm so working I'm on it. Yeah, yeah. I'm, and and I do see God doing something mm-hmm. there, and and I I am seeing a lot. But but being quiet and yeah. waiting mm-hmm. is really hard because you know I. I like to run. I like to get things yeah. done. And I expect God to be doing the same thing in my perspective. Mm-hmm. And what I don't always realize is He is doing that. He is. He's just not doing it in the way that I see or the mm-hmm. way that I want it to be. But he's doing it in a much better way. Yeah. So when I can quiet all those questions and all those thoughts and the things that yeah. I'm praying sometimes, and just listen and wait and see what he does. Yeah, I so agree with what you said. Oftentimes that comes up in me as like a just a be still because I'm like you and I'm not patient and I would I like a list and I like to get it done. So sometimes that will make me avoid sitting and being still because mm-hmm. that's often more painful. Yeah. So if I keep going, that I don't have to stop and think about my questions or my fear or pain. Yeah. But He'll often meet with me with that same thing. Just be still and sit and let me just yeah. love you or wash over you, give exactly. you peace. There's something beautiful in what we're talking about in that self-awareness mm-hmm. that we can openly and honestly and freely share mm-hmm. our confessions with God, mm-hmm. knowing that He takes it with love and works through it. There's mm-hmm. such a comfort in that yeah. because when we... When we hide the things, when mm-hmm. we hold on to it all the time, we don't want anybody to see the bad right. stuff, then God isn't able yeah. to help course correct mm-hmm. and to teach us and to help us to grow through that. That's so true. That's why I wrote a parenting confession down too. What's that? That I haven't said out loud ever. And I thought, maybe I don't want to actually tell Ginger because it will say it out loud and then... But then you can help me course correct. But it's true. When you say something out loud, you feel like now everybody knows. I know. And now it's like real. They all know. Yeah. <laughs> They're going to hear me. Yeah. Um, I have a hard time sometimes 
thinking specifically my oldest, maybe it's a season of where he is like not finding him just annoying and wanting to just be with him. And it makes me feel like a terribly awful mother because I love him more than anything. Sure. But he causes me to, he's probably so much like me. So it, there's a rub there Mm -hmm. and I have a hard time with him. And I have told Mike that I just, I don't know how to handle him. And it, and I will, sometimes I'd rather be with Peyton because I know how to do her. And so it, I don't know, there's something in me. You have just set so many parents free. Oh, I hope so. Because I feel, it makes me feel so bad to say it. Because I I remember those phases Mm -hmm. with each one of my girls at different times. Mm -hmm. Because we, as we grow, we're changing all the time. As our children grow, they're changing all the time. And there are going to be times that we just rub against one another. Mm -hmm. But iron sharpens iron. And that's the way God teaches us and He teaches them. And and confessing those things Mm -hmm. and I just remember praying, God, let me see her the way you see her. Let me see those things that you put in her mm-hmm. that are going to be such wonderful things down the road. Yeah. And, you know, hindsight again, mm-hmm. I, I've seen the way God worked through those really difficult periods mm-hmm. where it was like, I don't really want to be around mm-hmm. this one right now, mm-hmm. um, that God teaches both of us so much through that. And it's not going to last forever. Mm-hmm. And it's brave. Mm. What you said is brave. Great. Let's do it again. Now I'll confess another one for the other kid. <laughs> Talk me through that one too. Let's do it again. Last week, I texted you about going to the zoo. Can I take some time off? I want to go to the zoo with Peyton. I didn't want to go to the zoo with Peyton. I wanted you to say, no, you can't because I didn't want to go. <laughs> you need a code word if you want me to I say do. no. This is not the first like time. Like maybe an emoji yeah. of some sort. Can I... Can the I emoji go? with the X's over the eyes. If you send me that, I'll say no. You can't You go. cannot have the time off, which I never, ever say. You would never say that to me. That's why we need a coach. And so I had to think about it. Like, why do I not want to go? Why would I rather work than go spend time with Peyton? And it's like there's there's comfort in certain parts of what I, in my career, that are more comfortable to me than being with other moms that I don't know very well. Um, it just Girl, feels out of my comfort I sure zone. sure understand that. Yeah. So it's a lot of parenting confessions that I'm yeah. giving to you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I remember that so clearly. And in in my world at that time, you know, I I was working, it was very public. I was doing a, a daily talk show. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. Yeah. And so I felt very separated from many of the other moms yeah. and judged because sure I, and and I'm not saying they did honestly uh, much of it was what I felt, you felt some it. of it sure. let's be real some of it was what they said because women can be difficult yeah so can men let's just be fair people can people. be difficult <laughs> yes. but um I also took that on myself mm-hmm. like oh they stay at home with their kids mm-hmm. they they love them more they're better than I am yeah. somehow mm-hmm. and I think they probably felt the opposite you know, somebody else has a career and they can handle more than I can. And yeah. None of that's true. It's yeah. what God puts us in for that season. Mm-hmm. But I remember feeling like I didn't fit in mm-hmm. at times. And then God just did something beautiful for me when when the girls were little. He, he sent me a friend. He sent me someone that just came up to me out of the blue and said, I'm going to be one of your best friends. And <gasps> she just... What a gift. Oh, I know. She just understood everything yeah. and we had such great fun together and mm. no matter what was going on with the other moms it was a gift but you don't always have that sure. you know i didn't always have that but i love he gave that to you at oh some me point. too i'm so grateful so grateful for jane jane if you're listening i just love you jane but um it makes complete sense what you're feeling mm. and i think the other moms are probably feeling the same thing they're looking at you and probably saying so. look at this beautiful woman with the great career who's making a difference for Jesus mm-hmm. and they're like you know i can't compete and we all that competition thing mm-hmm. let's admit we've all got that in Absolutely. so many areas it does feel good to say that out loud there's freedom in that yeah 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 and it doesn't always go the way you want it to you know no and i just need to be okay with it yeah I just accept that sometimes it's it may not be great yeah. and that's okay my kid my kid felt like i showed up for her 
And she was so excited. Hugely important. You will never regret doing that. No. I think that's one no. of one of the things with all of these things that that we feel and the things that hold us back and the things that God wants to mm-hmm. work in us is none of those things are worth the regret that mm-hmm. we might face if we don't do what God is asking us that's to really do. Good wisdom. So you know, regret is worse yep. than than fear. Re- regret is worse than feelings that we're not fighting through, mm-hmm. you know, I, I, I never wanted to be there. Mm-mm. And so fighting against that yeah. is really important. Yeah. Well, let's, let's go back to Joyce because Joyce says we should not feel guilty about our doubts and our fears and all those things that we deal with. And we do have doubts in our faith at times, especially when we've been through some hard stuff. So as we are honest and open-hearted, God will work. So Joyce is going to share that she doubts God sometimes too. So in teaching you how to deal with doubt, I want to just make sure that it's clear up front that I'm not telling you that you're never going to have doubts. Matter of fact, I think it's better to just be honest with God about them. I like the guy who's son was demon possessed and he went to Jesus and Jesus said all things are possible if you believe and he said well I believe Lord but help my unbelief you know he still got his miracle I think sometimes we get less from God when we try to pretend a phony faith that we don't have instead of just being honest with God because you know what I found out about Jesus he loves us enough that he will meet us where we're at he doesn't make us come to him he will meet us where we're at think about Thomas Well, I'm just not going to believe. If I don't see the scars in your hands, in your side, I just cannot believe. And what did Jesus do? He showed them to him. He came and he met Thomas where he was at. And he said, now, more blessed are those who believe and have not seen. But you needed to see, so I've shown you. And you know what? Thomas went on to become a great evangelist in the nation of India. So just because you don't have 100% perfect faith, that doesn't mean that God won't use you, and it doesn't mean that he won't meet you where you're at, because I'll tell you what happens, the more experience that we have with God, the stronger our faith gets. It's much harder for a baby believer to get through real difficult times than it is for somebody who has had a lot of experience with God because you've seen God work time and time and time and time again. And that's why even like the psalmist David, when he was going through rough times, he would purposely remember the other things that God had done that brought him through. So I want to make sure you're with me. Do you understand what I mean when I'm saying that we can live on the surface where all this stuff is going on? Or we can go deeper And we can say, now, what is really in my heart? Because I'll tell you the truth, all this word stuff that you get, you may not remember it in your brain, but it's doing you a lot more good than what you think it is. And it's in there, and it's, it's food for your spirit, and it's keeping you stronger than you think that you are. But if we're gonna continue to just believe what our brain says and what we feel like all the time and all the lies of Satan, then we're just gonna give up and quit. I had a rough situation, something going on the last couple of weeks, and here I'm getting ready to come and teach on trusting God, and I felt like I didn't have a thimble full of faith. I kind of felt like, well, it's going to be really good for me to get up and try to tell everybody else to trust God all the time when I feel like I'm going to fall apart over this simple thing that I'm going through. 
And you know, God revealed to me later that he let me go through that on purpose because he didn't want me to get up here and just act like, well, it's just simple to have faith and just trust God and no matter what, just believe God. He, he wants, I want you to know that I know what it's like. I know what you're going through if you've got serious problems in your life and we're telling you in church all the time, well, trust God. It's much easier for us to stand up here and tell you to do it than it is for you to do it when your faith is being tested. But our faith will always be tested from time to time. How many of you found that out? Your faith is always gonna be tested from time to time. So don't think you're some kind of an inferior second-class believer. Come on, which we do sometimes, don't we? We start thinking, well, what is my problem? I should be further along than this. Well, I can tell you, if you would have asked me how I felt three days ago, I would have told you, well, I certainly should be further along than this. But to be honest, sometimes going through a little something like that is actually good for us because it helps us have empathy for other people when they're going through things. We need to be more careful about giving people these little flippant answers not everybody needs you to quote them a scripture. Sometimes they need a hug. Thank you, Joyce Meyer. Yeah, that's so true. I mean, just to know that we, first of all, we... are not second class Christians yes. because we have some doubts or mm -hmm. some questions or some things aren't going the way that we think it should. Yep. And we don't always react the way mm -hmm. that we should. But also not to be that surfacey Christian mm -hmm. that shakes our head at each other if there is some sort of problem in someone's yep. life or throws out a, a scripture that is is meaningful because mm -hmm. that's what God created it to be. But when we just throw it out as an answer to someone for life's really deep hurts, yep. sometimes they just need arms wrapped around that's them. That's true. I told a friend after Mark passed away, I said, I wish I could go back to all the people I've ever said anything to after they lost somebody because mm -hmm. I probably said things flippant like that. Like, just trust the Lord with all your heart and lean on on your understanding. Well, that is absolutely true. Yeah. You should trust the Lord with all your heart. But how it comes across in those moments if you don't if you can't have actual empathy with someone, it can it can come across disingenuous. Yeah, it's not always the time for yeah. that particular thing. And I don't mean we shouldn't say anything if we haven't experienced it, but right. I just like she's saying you get an extra lo level and layer of understanding for someone when you've been through it. When she said that like her having to deal with it before she spoke at the conference. Mm -hmm. It made me think of that image or just in my mind, like, you know, when you're just annoyed with Tim, I don't know if Tim does this to you. Mike does this to me. If like I'm annoyed. Night. Yeah. Like, okay. So, so tell me <laughs> when this I happened. shouldn't have been, that was entirely yes. my fault, but. You know, when like you don't want to be loved, but even you're upset, but you don't want to like. Oh be yes. Yes. And so sometimes I'll get like that and Mike will just hug me and I'll fight him on it because I don't, I think I want to be left alone. And if he can just, it drives me crazy, but if he can just like push through and hold on, I will like sink into his arms. Mm. And that's what faith sometimes feels like to me is I'm fighting against God and I'm pushing and I'm asking, where are you and what are you doing? But eventually, if I can just like mm. stop fighting and let go, I, I can feel him protecting me. That is a great example. Yeah, that was from the Holy Spirit just Well, now. that's a really beautiful image though. That's true. That is so much like the love of God. It is. It is because we fight. We fight him. And yeah. I think I like what she's saying because that, that's not wrong. It's not 
bad that I'm I'm not less of a Christian because I'm fighting back, but I also yeah. need to let go and just let him hold me. We sometimes we have to get to that point too, yep. where we feel like we've exhausted ourselves in yes. the fight. I know I can be yep. that way. Like mm-hmm. I've tried everything I know to do. I've been angry. I've been sad. I've read the Bible, but you know, sometimes that's just real surfacey. Like, right. okay, God, you better it. show me something right now. Mm-hmm. And and sometimes it really is just sinking into God's word it and is. surrendering all of that other stuff it is. that you think is going to make the difference. There's a, a friend on Instagram, I believe this is from, um, she shared, I've been single for 19 years and I don't understand why the Lord will not provide a husband. I'm now 58, year, 58 years old and I lose hope about it at times. And in her words, I could just feel, she probably feels that struggle. Mm-hmm. Like it's been 19 years and I'm fighting for this and you're not coming through for me. Yeah. So we can have empathy to know what that feels like to struggle with your faith because he's not right. answering you right away. Not getting what you really feel in your heart right. that you need. You want it. Yeah. But yeah. I, I go back to um, the verse that that says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you mm-hmm. the desires of your heart. Mm-hmm. And I believe that so strongly. But sometimes yeah. we feel like... But, this is the desire of my yes. heart. So, yeah. so many years I've wanted this mm-hmm. and, and it's not happening. Mm-hmm. You know, whether it's somebody wanting to be married or wanting a child or yeah. wanting, a, um, you know, a relationship restored, whatever mm-hmm. it may be. And that, that really is when we just have to surrender. And it's so hard to know that God's ways are not always our ways. Yes. But, but, and it sounds flippant to say, but there, there's good. There is. That He has good for us. And all of that is so hard to say to someone. It's mm-hmm. so hard to understand when we're hurting ourselves. Mm-hmm. But it's really all we have to hold on to. It is. And without that hope, mm-hmm. what do we have? You know, without hope that God could still do this. Yeah. First of all, I'm not letting go, but my faith is weak yep. because it's been a long time sure. and I'm not seeing it. But God is my only hope. Mm-hmm. And His love for me is complete. I am complete in who I am mm-hmm. right here in this spot, mm-hmm. even without this thing yeah. that I desperately want. Yeah. So it's like we have that battle between our our emotions and our knowledge of God's mm-hmm. Word and who He Is. And that's a difficult battle. It's it hard is. to fight through. It's, it is a constant like tension pull. Yeah. Which one's going to win for the day? We just have to keep fighting for yeah. trusting in Him. Yeah. In all of this stuff, 
we walk in, walking through with Mark and the, the grieving process of that. Um, I wrote this part down because I, I won't remember these words and their definitions if I don't cheat. Sorry. Um, but he kept bringing to my mind the words omnipotent, omnipotent mm-hmm. and omniscient and omnipresent. That wasn't one, but I looked it up too. And what those mean is he, he is omnipotent. He is in control of himself and his creation. That's us. Yeah. He's omniscient. He is the ultimate creator of truth and falsity. So he, he is truth. He, he knows. Yeah. He knows. Yeah. And omnipresent, he's everywhere. And so I was like, why? Like, I've known those words. I grew up in church. I know those in the charismatic church would come in those words on a banner for Easter Sunday, and it would say omniscient hmm. and omnipotent. And it was just like this really cool, majestic moment of focusing on how big God is. And so those came back to me recently. And I just been thinking about what they mean. And that means if I believe that he created every everything, he creates life, he gives life. And if he is the one who is doing all those things, like I say, I believe that I, I can never understand how it's all going to work. Yeah. But it's like the Job verse you said. Yeah. If he's creating all these things, I have to trust that he also knows how to do my life too. Yeah. You know? Exactly. And sometimes there's really nowhere else to turn. No. Because no. I've been in that anger place. Oh, I've for been sure. stuck in that place of, I don't know that I can trust God. Yeah. My faith is too weak right mm-hmm. now. And not living in that place is so much better. It is. Because that is just a black hole that takes you further and mm-hmm. further and further down into darkness, yeah. and there's no hope there. Yeah. And so once again, through hindsight and through experience and what God does, um, I, I see who He is in a different way. Yeah. But that doesn't mean you don't, you don't grow out of everything. No. You don't come to a place of divine wisdom where it's like, oh. You know, <laughs> I got no more problems because because even at this age, so I'm I'm 60 now, and I have really gotten to a spot where I'll confess I felt like God might be done with me. Oh, like I hate that you thought that. Well, you know, it's just I, I think it's things that come up in all of us now and then, and it's certainly something that the sure. devil wants to play with in our mind. Yeah, is that maybe. Maybe there's nothing new for me to do. Mm. Maybe there's nothing more. And I feel like inside God has placed so much, yeah, so much vision and, and passion and so much I want to do. But then when you don't see it happening mm-hmm. right away, you think, no, maybe maybe God's done. Yeah. Maybe there's nothing else. Maybe you and made all that up. Your faith yeah. gets smaller. Maybe this is just me yep. because... There, there are so many different things, you know, in our life that we want and we think, is it God or is it me or, or pride? Mm-hmm. You know, who do I think I am yep. to be able to do anything for the Lord? That's ludicrous. Right. And that's just, I know in my head that it's Satan talking to me. Yeah. But it's so easy mm-hmm. to fall into those patterns mm-hmm. when you're not seeing yeah. the answers. Yep. So a- again, Trusting God is the hardest thing, but it's the most beautiful long-term thing. That's where you get peace. Yeah. That's where you can walk through those hard things and still somehow know it's going to be okay. Yeah. So the answer Mm -hmm. is really to flip that on its edge Hmm. because instead of saying, maybe God's done with me, Mm -hmm. I'm saying God has a good thing ahead for me, Mm -hmm. you know, a a, a, a vision of my future that is good yeah. and full of purpose, yeah. and and there's so much more, mm-hmm. and just really confessing out loud the word of God mm-hmm. over our lives, no matter what we're feeling, no matter what we're seeing, yeah. no matter what stage we are in our life, whether a mom with a child that we're struggling with, or an older person wondering what the future holds, or a, a young person now thinking, I don't know what I want to do, shouldn't I know? Yeah. We can confess the word of God and and really change those things. And that's what this whole thing about mm-hmm. looking back at our Christmas confessions, it's that time of year that we we look back and we ask all those questions and we can just be honest with God and say, but I'm going to replace those things yeah. with your truth instead. That's so good. You're really smart. <laughs> I just want to leave it at that. <laughs> that was really good wisdom. <laughs> Well, that's very kind. Thank I'm going to re-listen to that again and replay it over and over again. Well, you know what I did? I what? I wrote down 
some Christmas confessions for Aaron. <gasps> oh I, no, I'm I cry. did. Okay. I did because I I get it. I I know what it is to see who we really are. Mm-hmm. Like I see the pride, I see the selfishness in me. I see those things in me that are the problems. And yeah. sometimes it's hard to see the beauty that God has put in us that because greater is he who's in us than he mm-hmm. who is in the world. The things that he puts in us are bigger than those things that we're dealing with all the time yeah. if we can honestly confess them and deal with them. So I think it's important that our, our friends yeah. who see the beautiful things in us can mm-hmm. say, this is who you are. Yeah. So it's not like I have to look at my list, but God has just put so much beauty in you inside and out. That is who you are. You are not just a beautiful woman, but you have a beautiful heart. You have a heart that lifts people up and encourages people so naturally. You're a good mama. You love those kids. And of course you have some bad days, but you are leading them into who they will be in Christ. And I see it all the time. And I'm excited for who they will be because God chose you to be their mom and Mike to be their dad. And and I just, I think it's so important. You're so talented. You have talent that just overflows that... Well, I, I I just know that there's such a bright future for what God wants to do in you and through you that you're not even aware of. There's so much ahead. Big, big, bright future. And you're really... A, this is my last one. I'm sorry. I need to bring I my go lashes. On, <laughs> but you are a really good friend. That's oh. why you've been in 27 weddings or whatever it is. I have. So, you, you need know, a dress. I got one to share. <laughs> But you you love people well, and you're you're just a really good friend, and you don't find those everywhere you look. So that's really important. That's you're nice. a gift to me and to many many people. Thank you. You're welcome. That was wonderful. You're welcome. Do I get a, a turn? No, sorry, we're out of time. Oh no, <laughs> stick around, folks. Let me get my list. Um, I can do this off the cuff pretty easily. I would like to combat what you said that God is known. He's not done with you yet because. I mean, me, along with many other people, need you, and we need your wisdom, and we need what what you see in people some of us don't see in ourselves. And you call things out of us that we would never call out of ourselves because of our own insecurities or whatever. So you are needed greatly, not just for me and the people that are in this building or wherever, for your grandkids and for, I mean, so many people that just need your wisdom. You are fierce and in the most beautiful, godly way, (laughs) because you fight for the people that you love and you fight for the people that you don't know. If injustice is brought to them, you will go to the ends of the earth to fight for them. Mm -hmm. And you fight for your family. And I've never seen a mom love their kids more than you, except my mom. But (laughs) apart from her, that is fair. But you are just, (laughs) just a treasure to me. Oh, thank you. That is really sweet. See now, now you want to blink really fast. Yeah, I know. And then the tears won't fall down. From our lashes. Uh, yeah. If, if I can open my eyes really wide, uh-huh. they slide right back down inside. And then I kind of feel like I'm choking. <laughs> but it's better. What a way to end. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, these things... <laughs> thank you, Aaron. You're I love welcome. you. I love you so much. These these things that that we're sharing, the confessions, but also flipping it around to who God says you are. That's Mm -hmm. what you need to do in your own life. Do it for the people that you love too, if they can't do it for themselves, but do it for you because God's truth will never fail you and it never changes. So as we talk about our confessions this week and you're going to walk it out, here's a great verse for you. Romans 15, 13, may the God of hope Fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. Whatever you're dealing with, whatever you're confessing, all those things that annoy you about yourself, there's so much more that God sees when He looks at you and He smiles down at you with such great love. So we're so glad you were with us. Thank you for sharing our Christmas confessions. And we're going to see you next time. And we're going to talk about some real hope for the new year. It's going to be great. We'll see you then. 